Julian Lowenthal, filmmaker, joins us this episode right here on Messier Mantra. Julian, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing? I'm doing really well. And I'm really happy to have you because we've been buddies for a couple of years. Yes. And you just reached out to me because you have a big premiere coming up April 26th. And you know, if people see this episode in time for April 26th, where should they be? Where should they go? Well, Mike, great question. They should go to the Greenfield Garden Cinema in Greenfield, Massachusetts. We have two showings, 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. in 13 days from today. And this is for your film. Uh, Silenced. Silenced. And we've got your producer as a guest. Uh, she's not on camera, but uh, Colleen Lyon is yep. here. Yep, shout out to Colleen Lyon, without whom the film would not be where it is today. Okay. Team Silenced and Team Colleen Lyon. Thank you. All right, well, let's take a look at the uh, trailer for the film so people can kind of catch up and then we'll talk about it. Let's check out the trailer right now for Silenced on Messier Mantra. In a few hours, every home and major establishment in Charters Falls will be raided and robbed. <laughs> the old lady took in her kid. He was the only survivor of this train crash. Sly killed the old lady. I think someone is watching us. I didn't join this group for power. Shut up! I joined it for the money and the excitement. No, I'm starting to think that was a bad idea. When I find you, I am going to have you! Silenced filmmaker Julian Lowenthal is with me here in the studio. So this was uh, clearly inspired by Sandra Bullock and Paul Rudd, uh, romantic comedies. Or totally <laughs> inspired by them. Without them, this film would not have been an idea. But as, uh, what I'm seeing is really more like uh, a little bit of Scream, but, but also going back to um, Clockwork Orange almost. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like some of that cryptic gang uh, brutality. What, what did inspire uh, this project? Well, actually, a, a couple things. I was 18 when I fell in love with the idea of making kind of the main, you know, underdog character, someone who was mute. Right. So I fell in love with that and then built a whole world around uh, that. And uh, when I was 21, that's when I wrote the script for this, I was really uh, getting kind of bored with grotesque horror films right. that catered to gore, which works, but I find that more gross than scary. And I wanted to go back to like the alien day and age where it's a lot of it's in the mind. Like there's a lot of scary stuff, but you're on the edge of your seat and it's more just psychological than it is just graphic gore. Seems almost like early 80s, The Shining or uh, Poltergeist from I think 82 or that type of thing. I can agree with that. Yeah, and I'm glad you noticed that because a big thing we also wanted to have like a like a throwback campy feel back right. when they made those films with uh, film cameras, you know. Right. And uh, I mean, you mentioned uh, films, you, you were good, you didn't mention the names, but things like Saw or, you know, all the sequels. To me, uh, some of those gross out torture porn horrors, as I call them, they were, for me, a bit of a turnoff. I mean, I, I remember seeing the first Saw and literally being transfixed by it because what it was was well, very well made. Right. But at the end of it, my first thought was people are going to see this movie and go out and start killing people, you know, because of the brutality involved. 
But this, what you're doing is, uh, like I said, the feeling of the clockwork orange or even eyes wide shut in a sense with those masks, which I found very interesting. Um, the, the masked element of, of these, uh, you know, bad guys or this cult is, uh, we were talking before the show that somewhat uh, theater, theatrical uh, indications. I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, basically, to summarize the film, it's really a, a theater robbery gone terribly wrong. And uh, there's a lot of imagery and symbolic messages I like to play with. And one of the big ones is that, yeah, as you notice, everyone is in these masks, which can resemble the happy frown mask that you see to symbolize theater. And so because, again, it, it hugely takes part in a theater, we did want to have a lot of uh, elements that were surrounding that. It's interesting when you talk about, um, you know, theater within the confines of the film, because then, you know, as actors ourselves, we know that when you start playing another character, there's that suspension of the actor going through that process. And I think more audience members than one might think can relate to that. You know, I think, I think the audience, because a lot of people in a film audience have done some acting or they've mm. always wanted to. Right. So I think there is a connection to characters in a film that are actors as well or, or in a theater situation. Right. Uh, this process, this project, you wrote it, um, and you also edited and directed and, and acted, and then you had your producer, Colleen, but you did a lot of stuff on your own, too. So what was that like, just taking all these different hats? I mean, it was a lot, but it was uh, a great learning experience. You know, I've always been one that I feel like the best way to learn is by doing so, yes, I did take on a lot of hats on this project, but it taught me a lot, and uh, you know, I'm really happy with how it came out to be, and I learned a lot through the, the several years that this process took. What would you advise people watching our episode, and they say, wow, this guy made a movie, and sometimes people watch this show and they would like to, but they don't know where to start. I mean, what would you say is the first step? Step one, invest in yourself. You know, I, I always tell everyone the biggest thing, as cliche as it might sound, is just don't give up. Right. Literally and figuratively, do not give up. Just just keep going no matter what you have to do. I, I also want to let people know this industry, even though it's really fun and it seems glamorous, there is a lot of work. Hours are days on set. You know, or not just some of them are 16, 17 hour days. And it's, it's just about how much you're willing to put in. Um, I always tell people, uh, if you're really interested in doing movies full time, be willing to spend the first couple of years volunteering, right. getting out there, be a production assistant, help out. There's always some project going on. So just by networking, that's a great beginning. And, and then you learn resources and uh, people that can help your uh, dream come to reality. I'm glad you mentioned that because just recently I put out a little casting call for an actor and I... I got the, all the you know, guys wanted to be the actor, but then I got someone who said, hey, I'd like to be a production assistant on your shoot. And I wasn't even looking for a production assistant, but someone took the initiative to contact me, and now this uh, young lady is going to be the script supervisor, and she's already done a script breakdown because she took that initiative. And a lot of people can do that. Maybe they don't think to do that, but maybe our conversation will gear them in that direction. And that really stands out for her. You know, that, that's exactly what I tell everyone, just... Just keep going. The worst case scenario is somebody will be like, no, we're filled. Right. But they'll remember that you tried, you pursued, and if you just remind them, maybe down the road they have room or they need an extra set of hands, that will be your launch off to, to begin. Now, getting back to your screening, April 26th, and, and, you know, hopefully people do see this in time, but if they happen to catch the show after April 26th, 2018, there'll be other ways to see your movie. Uh, are you going to enter the film festival circuit or straight to consumer distribution of some kind? Or what are your thoughts on that? Well, at this time, we're looking to go from the premiere to as many uh, festivals as we can. And then throughout that period, let's see what uh, happens, you know? Okay. And going back to the process of the project, we do have some behind the scenes footage uh, that you provided. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll have our uh, uh, station manager, uh, Cody and, and Kevin, uh, Put that up for us. We'll check out the behind the scenes footage of silence right here on Messier Mantra.
But the question is, do they look weird? You know, my friend, you're more cultured. Sure, sure, take your time, but uh, not too much time. I was still shoplifting when I was like eighth grade. I stole books. I still <laughs> I want to peek the box in my shot. <laughs> Back with Julian Lowenthal discussing silence. What a what a fascinating uh, three or four minutes behind the scenes with you guys. Uh, just for clarification, what is thief when it says? How do you feel about thief throughout the piece? Right. So each masked character, they're meant to look very similar to each other, so you can never tell who's who. As you watch the film, you do get to notice the differences. But one of the big differences you'll notice at the very beginning is they each have code names. Okay. Thief is one of the mass villains. Was that the one in white? Uh, that's White Death. White Death. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And and I was definitely in that backstage or behind the scenes vignette. We saw some real characters, and I could totally relate to being on independent film sets and. I think it was the young lady with the hat was like your first uh, assistant director. Yes. And she seems Louisa. like, yeah, I, I've never met her, but she seems like she would be a real force, like someone who's very outspoken and kind of taking control of certain moments because she wants the, what's best for the movie too. She did. Again, I, I feel very blessed. We not only had a great cast, but our crew was and is phenomenal. And that's why, thank you, Louisa, my uh, first assistant director, who was very on top of uh, her job. So great observations and a lot of times on these independent film sets like for instance I think your producer is also uh, doing camera uh, yep. DP or, or, yep. or and, and well you were listed as DP too so there's a lot of so so basically I uh, shot the film originally we're, we're gonna have somebody else shoot the film but it but things just so happened that it just worked out better I shot it but uh, there was a few scenes that I'm in and uh, that's why Colleen not only is she the producer but she's camera operated a bunch of uh, scenes in the movie. And she's stepping up great because I can see the, the care that she's got the young lady, uh, the actress in the bedroom scene, and of course, 
when you have something like that, you know, you want to make the actress look phenomenal with the best lighting, the hair, and you had hair and makeup people. So it seems like you guys really went all out for this thing. Oh, we do, we did, and that's why, again, I, I, I'm really thankful to my team who put everything they possibly could into it and are still, to this day, doing everything they can to help spread the word for the premiere. Was it tough being uh, the director, the writer, and then suddenly within those the same process you're acting in this movie? Because did you get that interior monologue of self-critiquing your own acting or questioning things in the script, but then you're like, hey, I wrote this script. Did you have any troubles like that, or were you so into it that you had no, no problems like that? Well, I mean, at, at points, you're, you're right. It does get overwhelming, but that's why you've got to take a moment and just tell yourself, Right now, you're directing, or in uh, the few scenes of acting, after I set the whole scene up, I'm like, all right, Julian, now get it, take a moment to get into your character and just focus on that. You're right, th there was a lot to balance, but uh, you know, with anything, if you just take it one step at a time and look at what's right in front of you, you can make it work. Now, uh, really impressive to me is that at 76 minutes, this is a feature, you right. know, and so I've been mean, doing the film festival circuit myself, I remember years ago we made a movie. And I was like, I want to make a feature, and then it was, it was really close, you know. With the and we cut a scene out. I'm like, no, we can't cut a scene. It came out to be 72 minutes, was was just over that that 70 minute mark. Just made it right. Right. Like, you know, do we have to make longer credits? You know. What I mean? like, <laughs> but uh, I'm really happy for you, man. You got a feature under your belt, and when people come out for April 26, what can they expect? They can expect uh, a great time, a thrill something that you'll remember and uh, after the premieres we're inviting everyone to a, a nice enjoyable cast and crew after party which will be pretty much right across the street at a local bar and grill and this um uh that's called uh, the hangar the hang yes uh spoiler alert the hangar bar and grill will be where the after party is okay cool so and and just in case it has to be spelled out uh probably kids young kids can sit this round out, I would say. This is an intense film. I mean, yes, um, <laughs> it is an intense film. I, I, as a filmmaker, I, I would want more people to go, but yes, I will say this uh, will definitely give the youngins some nightmares, so uh, be aware of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, Julian, um, you're going to do the film festival circuit, you're going to enter the film. Beyond that, what are your hopes? Uh, for this movie, like what, what do you hope that it manifests, Silence? You know, that's a question I ask myself every day. And uh, just like I said with when I was filming it, you know, I want to look at one step at a time and basically what I see right now is festivals and then let's just see what happens, you know, see what life has to offer and just keep pushing through. All right, uh, it's terrific. And uh, we'll talk about some of your cast members. Uh, a lot of these guys were under, you know, the hood, so to speak, as as this, uh, as these different characters, White Death and so forth. But is there any uh, of the cast members you want to discuss? Uh, you know, some of the things that they're up to now. All right. Well, um, yes. Yeah, so my cast and crew have been quite busy from three and a half years ago when we shot the film. Uh, some of them, some of the the main leads, have been doing uh, other features around New England, New York. And my assistant director, Louisa, worked on a, a Hugh Jackman feature for the last couple of years. Um, but another big thing a lot of my, the, the lead actors have been doing is playing with both you know, films and theater. So I'm not sure if uh, Silence kind of inspired the inner theater actor inside them or if they just wanted to try another avenue. But they've been keeping busy. That's great because I think a lot of times actors Sometimes in this area, especially it seems, they don't realize the value of doing live theater. Like they, <laughs> it's like lost on them that that's really what theater, I mean, acting is theater in my book, you know what I mean? Because you have that vibe with the live audience. Mm. There's been acting for, for thousands of years. There's only been film for maybe 150 years. Yeah, relatively so, you know? a new medium. Right, right. Uh, what about yourself? Are, are you a guy um, who basically wants to produce, direct, write scripts or are you also looking to be a guy who acts in other people's projects as well? Well uh, I definitely love the whole filmmaking process and I always tell different uh, filmmakers that I'm, that I'm always interested in getting involved with many projects but in terms of what I'm most passionate about uh, directing, producing, my definitely my two favorites 
I love writing, and uh, I'm always, you know, interested in acting and just having fun in that world as well. Nice. And um, Julian, did you spend some time in New York City a while ago? Was that, were you thinking about doing that, or had you done that? I was born in New York, so I always credit kind of my nonstop wanting to keep grinding uh, attitude is because of my, you know, birth in the New York area and the roots of that. But uh, I really am in love with New England, and I really want to just make New England shine. So if New York is in my future, I'm down to dabble in New York, but uh, I really want to push to make New England the new Hollywood. That's, that's great, man. And so um, well, I guess what I'll ask at this time is the show is called Messier Mantra. And as you know, I do ask the guests, do you have a mantra? Do you have like a, a, a phrase or an expression or a, you know, a belief system that you want to share with the audience as to what they can do uh, or what you do? You know what I mean? Well, I guess I, guess I, I laugh because depending on who you ask, um, my mantra, or what I always tell people, is passion. Because with passion, that equals not giving up. And if you're passionate about anything, whether your hobbies are painting, dancing, singing, filmmaking, whatever it may be, bring it with passion. Because as long as you're passionate, people will start to notice you. Well, that's, that's true, because um, a lot of times you have the feeling with some folks that they're doing paint by numbers or they're just not into it, or mm, they're, right. you know what I mean? Or they're doing it because they feel that they owe someone a favor or someone owes them a favor. But, but I get the vibe with Silenced and yourself that you're taking this very seriously. Uh, you're in it to win it, so to speak. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about this April 26th thing. Well, thank you, I am too. And it was smart of you to get two screenings because sometimes, what, what times are the screenings again? 6.30 and 8.30 p.m. And that's smart because a lot of times people you know, if they have kids or work in the morning, they got to go to 6.30. Right. If they're coming out of work, then they can go to 8.30. You know, so no one has an excuse. Uh, and how big is the theater that we're uh, looking at here? Uh, it's a pretty big theater. There's going to be a lot of other movies at the same time, so it's a nice size. Uh, the venue we got, both showings can hold up to 214 people that's, each. That's cool. So, folks, just come on out. Yes. Be it's going to be a fun time. Right. That's, that's really great. And... Um, uh, let me just think what else. I guess one, one aspect that would probably take a whole uh, other conversation is the budgeting, the financing. Was this privately funded? Was it just, you know, you got to pay for it out of your own pocket? Or did you do crowdfunding? Or was there a mix? Or, or did you get an outside benefactor for the film? Or how did that work? Well, uh, so back to the word passionate. Um, when I was 21, that is when, like I said, I wrote it. And, I'm, and I determined I want to make a feature film. So... I saved up a year from uh, some, you know, odd jobs, day jobs, um, saved up a year of funding and self-funded this film because it's my first feature film. Right. Uh, yeah, self-funded it. And uh, I, I guess the biggest thing is everyone that I had involved was very passionate. So we made a small budget really go a long way. It's tough, man, because when you're first making a movie, even when you've been making them for a while, it's hard because... It's not in the average business owner or civilian's mindset, oh, I'm going to help fund an independent film today. You know what I mean? So to try and get investors or fund, you can spend two or three years doing that with very little result. But what you did, just kind of taking the ball into your own hand and self-financing. Right. And it's a great stepping stone because the ultimate plan is from here, mm -hmm. we make bigger films and keep making more films and we'll have investors see what we did with the littler than micro budget film and if they give us a bit more see how much we can stretch that to the full potential it has going back to that clip of behind the scenes there's a point where you say blame me and it's within the context i'm sure of i wasn't there but something going on on set where there's some type of situation that needs addressing and you're the way i took that little soundbite was you were basically accepting responsibility for whatever was going on you've got your name on this thing as a director as the director so don't you know, don't pass the buck. You took the buck, so to speak, in that moment. Right. Well, uh, I forgot which director says it, but it, it's not my line, but uh, I really follow suit. You know, if somebody likes the film, you got to credit the whole team because without one of us, it would not have happened how it did. But if you have any issues with the film, blame the director, you know. Right. Because, uh, again, for, for all the positives, team effort. But, you know, you're right. I, I take responsibility. Blame me if there's something 
you're not 100% satisfied with. Do you have a website or any type of social media that people can look into your stuff or YouTube channel that you wanted to mention? Or? Well, our website, which will be containing uh, festivals we go to, additional interviews and premieres, screenings, is silencedthefilm.com. Nice. And, and I want to credit uh, my composer, Matt Felton, for uh, designing the website, as well as our awesome uh, poster. Poster's up here now, too. <laughs> Thanks. All over. Looks good. I mean, it's, it is a haunting image. Um, and that's true, man. Death finds all. Thank man. you, Matt Felton. Well, well, he did a great job. And Thank you, the whole team. I've got to give a shout out also to James, Todd, James Hanberg, everyone. Want to shout you all out. Without any of you, we could not have been here. That's why I'm really excited. 13 days, and it comes out. It, it takes a village to make a film, doesn't it? Takes a <laughs> takes a town, <laughs> country exactly. It's, I mean, speaking of towns, one of the, the Hallmark Institute of Photography is that where you film some of these theater scenes? What the former Hallmark Institute of Technology? Uh, well, there's actually a bit of history, and we filmed it at the Shea Theater. Um, the Hallmark Institute is is very near the Shea Theater, okay. but we didn't use that to film. And the Shea Theater is where all the se theater scenes take place. Um, and I'm really excited because they recently revamped it, so we have the last memory of what the theater used to look like when it's all dismal and dark. Well, then you got historical status yep. then for this film. And it's some uh, accurate information for those historian buffs in the film. We have some uh, little, little secret cherries, if you were. One thing um, is just whenever you make a film, the, the relationships really with the people, the cast, the crew, and how people come together to make this thing. And you're definitely doing the right thing by having this screening on April 26th because that way the people that were involved get to come see it, they get to support it. If people want to ask questions of your cast and crew, I'm sure there'll be opportunities. Right, and that's why uh, the big thing is, you know, the questions, the Q&A, the socializing will be at the after party in which people are welcome to have some complimentary food, talk to any of the cast or crew, and just have a good, good night. You know, it's going to be great. Thursday, April uh, 26th is going to be an awesome time. 6.30 and 8.30. And Correct. I was going to ask the composer of the movie, did he also do the, the music for the behind the scenes uh, clip that we watched? Was uh, that? No, he did all the composing for the film. That was tr uh, thanks to the person who edited the behind the scenes video. Okay, because that, that person did a good job too. Yeah, again, every person from every position, PAs to ADs was marvelous in this so thank you everybody julian lowenthal it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure thank you thanks for bringing your producer colleen lyon and uh thanks for watching this episode of messier mancha with our special guest talking about silence is a feature film we'll see you next time on messier mancha